Hey guys, what's up? I'm Steven, and you're watching my series on practical JavaScript, where we work through the algorithm challenges at freecodecamp.com. In this video, uh, we're going to learn how to factorialize a number. Uh, this is a very common um, you know, algorithm uh, challenge you'll have to do for job interviews or for you know, interviews at coding boot camps. And uh, I'm going to show you two possible solutions on how to achieve that. Um, I'm using the free software of this uh, video recorder. Now, I've only got 15 minutes, so uh, allow me to set up my stopwatch. Okay, and it's all set. So let's uh, first take a look at the instructions at freecodecamp.com. Um, basically, uh, a factorial is a simple concept. Um, you're going to return the factorial of the provided integer, so our uh, function needs to have one argument. Uh, phi factorial is the result of 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5, which is 120. So 4 factorial would be the result of 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, which would be uh, 24, and so on. So uh, let's just jump right into it. Um, and if you've been following along, you know I'm going to work with two files. I've got my two underscore factorial .js file right here, and I'm embedding it um, in my HTML file right here on line 11. Uh, and then I'm going to be running my code in Google Chrome, and I've got my um, developer tools open here with the JavaScript console. So get that all set up and then come back when you're ready. Okay, so uh, let's just do some basic stuff, just setting it up. And by now, you know how to set up a function. Okay, factorial. Okay, and we'll try it with five. All right, so uh, first uh, method I'm going to show you is with iteration. Basically, iteration um, is is uh, you take an array of something and you you perform some action action on each uh, on each value of the array. Um, I'm I'm thinking about arrays because if you go back to the free code camp website, um, they're showing us what phi factorial looks like, and this kind of resembles an array. So why not? Let's go with that. Whoops. Uh, so first thing I'm going to create an empty variable var array, okay, and uh, I need to populate this array with uh, those numbers, so um, I need to populate it uh, starting with one going all the way up to uh, the number here, um, and this is going to be a dynamic number, I mean it could change depending on the input, so I want something like a loop, I'm going to use a for loop, so for var i equals one, and i, uh, we're going to continue doing this um, so long i is less than or equal to the number. And then after each iteration, we're going to increase it by 1. Okay. Um, and then I'm just going to push this number represented by i into our array. So array.push i. And let's just verify that this works. I'm going to go to the console, refresh. Okay, and there's our array. We got one, two, three, four, five. If I do this with uh, other numbers, okay, seven. Okay, there we go. It's working. So um, we got the uh, array set up, and now it's time to uh, do something with that. Um, the easiest way to iterate through an array like this is uh, using something, um, a method called the reduce uh, uh, method. Reduce is a method for arrays, and it basically takes all the values of an array and it reduces it to one value. All right, and it looks like this. All right, we're going to say var answer equals array dot reduce. Okay, so it's a method uh, for arrays. And uh, this is an example of functional programming. Uh, for this, you know, function, we're passing in an integer. But for the reduce method, we need to pass in a function, an anonymous function, as an argument. So that looks like this. 
And it looks a little funky, it looks a little weird, but you're gonna see this a lot in, in JavaScript. So it's a it's very good uh, idea to get used to this uh, syntax early on in your learning journey. Okay, so um, I'm gonna do something here. All right, so uh, what we have, um, the, the reduce, uh, the reduce method takes a function as an argument, and that anonymous, anonymous function takes um, two uh, arguments. So A kind of represents this accumulator, and then B uh, represents uh, the next value of the array. All right, uh, let's just return the answer, make sure that works. Oh, and it does, great. So what's happening here? Okay. So we have, um, we have a, let me just comment this out. All right, we have an array of, uh, we'll say, five numbers. So A represents this accumulation, and then B represents the next value. So in our first iteration, okay, excuse me, just checking the, checking the time, perfect. All right, in our first iteration, A is equal to one, and then B is equal to two. So return a times b. So after our first iteration, our array looks something like this. All right, and now we're gonna do it again. So return a times b. So this is a, and now this is b. So two times three equals six. So now this is what our array looks like. So six times four is 24. And 24 times 5 is 120. And so we can verify that. Okay. There we go, 120. So that's all the uh, reduce array does. Uh, it has an accumulator represented by A, and then it has um, it, it has uh, the next value of the array represented by B. It, you can call it anything, actually. You can say X and why it works exactly the, the, the same way. It just has an accumulator and it has the next value. So if we use X and Y, it doesn't matter uh, to JavaScript. And um, we can create this uh, answer variable uh, or we can just, you know, we can get rid of that and we can just simply say return. Okay, and works exactly the same way. Let's use another number. Let's use a big number. Holy smokes. Okay, so nine factorial, that's quite big. Okay, so this is the first uh, method. Uh, we're using the reduce method, and this is an example of solving factorials uh, with iteration. And, um, and reduce is a good example of functional programming, which uh, you'll see a lot in more advanced challenges. All right, the next uh, way we're gonna solve this is through recursion. Um, Recursion, uh, in its simplest definition, is quite a, an easy concept. Uh, recursion is when a function calls itself. Um, so that concept is easy. Okay, a function calling itself, that's easy to understand. Using it uh, in practice can be a bit of a, of a mind bender. And, um, and explaining it to someone else uh, is a little difficult. So if, if I'm rambling on, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm gonna try my best to, to explain this. I'm not a professional programmer. Um, but anyway, uh, let's, just, let's just try it. So, so yeah, when we, when we do something like this, factorial, okay, all right? So in this function, I'm calling the same function, okay? Um, this, is, this is recursion right here. What you see right now, this function is calling itself. The problem with this, if you run this, and if you, uh, if, if you try to open this in your browser, it'll probably crash your browser um, because this, you know, resembles a loop and an infinite loop. So we need to create a base case, uh, something to, to let the interpreter know, the program know that uh, we want it to stop running. So I'm going to set up a, a conditional. So if number equals to one, then I'm going to say return one. 
Okay, and let's just test that out. Okay, I'm just gonna pass in one. So basically, if this number is one, we're gonna return one. Factorial of one is one. All right, so when I run this, I should get one. Okay, thank God. All right, now, else? Okay, now, here is where the recursion happens. All right, number times factorial number minus one. Okay, and let's give it a factorial of five. Let's save that. Okay, all right, our recursion works. Now, what in the heck is going on? Well, I'm gonna to try to explain this in a couple of minutes, uh, and I'll step through it step by step. All right, here is a, here's a multi-line comment. All right, so in our first iteration, all right, we're doing five, so num is five. Num is not equal to one, so we're gonna run this block. So return, return five, okay, five times factorial, and then we're gonna say num minus one, so in this case, four, okay? Return, okay, I'm gonna say five. So in our second iteration, num is now four. Four is not one, so we're gonna return this again, okay, this block. So return four times factorial and then num minus one, so three. And you can see what's happening here, all right? Num is three, it's not one, so return three times factorial two. All right, so now num is two and it's not one, so we're gonna uh, run this code again. Return two times factorial one. Okay, and so now num is equal to one, so we're going to return one. Okay, all right, so now we have to work backwards. So factorial one, factorial one, okay, is represented by this value here. So factorial one is one. Okay. And this factorial two right here from above is the result of this. So return two times one. Okay, so that's two. And this factorial three is the result of this. Return three times two. So that's six. Oops. Okay. And this factorial four is the result of this. And then five times 24, which gives us a result of 120. Okay, so basically that is the factorial. Um, you may not understand it uh, at, the, at its first run, and that's to totally normal. Uh, so I highly recommend uh, just go old school, get some paper and pen, and do what I've just done. Execute it line by line, go to the recursion, and just try to think like the computer. And, um, and, uh, and, and if you do that enough times, hopefully it, you'll understand it. Okay, guys, uh, so I showed you two ways to solve this problem, uh, finding the factorial of a number. First way was using iteration. Second way was using recursion. Um, if you have any questions, please ask them in the comments below. And if you like this, um, go to the repo uh, at the FCC Busan uh, organization. You can find all the code there. And um, if you want to make an improvement or some changes, uh, make it to your fork and then uh, do a pull request. Okay, that's all for now. And Take care, have fun, happy coding.